What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our week one NFL game picks outright versus the spread along with our locks of the week. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at all day pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And lastly, let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And in today's breakdown, we will be using Odds Jam to help us get the best odds on all of these games. And if you guys aren't familiar with Odds Jam, well, pretty much point blank, it's one of the best resources that you guys can use in terms of doing line shopping, doing research for all of your NFL bets, and not just NFL, pretty much every other sport as well. The database of information that they have allows you, whether you're a beginner in terms of betting or an expert, to get an edge and maximize your profits because it can also be used with betting tools such as Positive EV to show big time line discrepancies to get the best odds there, arbitrage, so you can get equal and opposite bets for risk free returns. Really has all the resources that you could want. Make sure to check that out. But with that being said, let's get into these breakdowns. Now, we're going to mention the Thursday night game. Uh, that kicked off the season initially, the Bucks versus the Dallas Cowboys. And if you listen to our breakdown earlier in the week, you heard us say we like the Bucks offensively. They just had too much going, the more complete team with that defense. Uh, but we did say watch out for that Dallas offense. It could hang in there, and it does have its firepower uh, of its own, you know, to rival pretty much any single team. And that's kind of how it happened. Now, uh, we got the Bucks outright. Uh, even though they made a sweat for it, getting that last second field goal on the spread. Uh, we actually picked the Bucks there. You know, maybe if it wasn't for a late Chris Godwin fumble, it would have gone that way as well. But no, the Dallas Cowboys covered. So we start out the week at one and one. Afterwards, though, let's look at our Sunday games, beginning with the Buffalo Bills versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Bills at home here. To nobody's surprise, they are the favorites at minus six and a half. And I'd say right now, probably the Bills are that sexy new team kind of on the upswing that probably a lot of people are going to be picking to make another deep playoff run with a guy in Josh Allen that had that MVP type of year last season, you know, that next great young quarterback. And I totally get it. I understand that Stefan Diggs was absolutely sensational for them last year. Um, Sean McDermott, a great young head coach, the defense in the secondary, really good, um, so all around, definitely a contender, but I do think there's something to be said about us, about us just kind of writing off the Steelers. Uh, I don't think they're as good as a couple of years ago. You know, Big Ben, obviously a little bit older. Don't know how much longer he has left. To me, a big concern for the Steelers is that offensive line, which at the end of the day is going to be the reason why I take the Bills outright. But on the spread at minus six and a half uh, for the Bills, especially if that number continues to go up. Considering the defense that the Steelers have, I think they're just built to keep games close. It might not necessarily translate into wins, but with the defense they have, Big Ben's still a reliable quarterback. You've got a great trio of wide receivers in Juju Smith and Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. All great options. I think for the most part, they can kind of keep pace, keep this game close. I'm interested to see how they use Najee Harris, how much that offensive line holds up. Uh, but at the end of the day, I will take Josh Allen uh, over the Steelers here. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than people believe. Uh, that defense for the Steelers last time they played was a little bit nicked up. I think that was an issue for the Steelers late last season. Now, seemingly, you know, obviously these two teams week one going to be healthier than they ever will be for the remainder of the season. Uh, so I do think that plays in favor of the Steelers. Uh, however, I'm going to take the Bills outright. Uh, but on the spread, I will ride with the Steelers. Moving on, we have got the Seattle Seahawks at the Indianapolis Colts. Seattle actually favored here uh, at minus three. While I don't disagree with that, uh, I do like the Seahawks outright because I think this could be a lower scoring game. And in those situations, I tend to go with the quarterback that I have more faith in, the one that is better suited for those late fourth quarter situations. To me, that is Russell Wilson. And Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, you know, he was coming off an injury in the offseason, even though he will be available for this game, which is obviously a huge benefit for the Colts. He's going to be reunited with the Reich here, which is a good thing. You know, his best year 
in the league came with that head coach pairing. So I think that's a benefit, but there's something to be said, you know, uh, getting that chemistry with these guys. He was injured for a while, didn't have a chance to do it. T.Y. Hilton won't be available, even though I don't think that'll be that big of a factor. Um, Overall, though, I do think the Colts are a balanced team. I'm just more so pointing out the Carson Wentz factor as why I like the Seattle Seahawks outright. But I actually think the Colts are the more balanced team, even potentially if Quinton Nelson isn't at 100 percent, doesn't play here on that offensive line. It's still a good unit. They are built to be a team, you know, even if they have a game managing quarterback to stay competitive. Their defense is very, very solid. They've got running backs that can hurt you. Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines. I'm a big fan of Michael Pittman. And again, I don't think Carson Wentz has to do anything all that special uh, if the Colts want to win, that's probably what will need to happen. But for them to keep this game close, uh, I think, you know, that's probably the way it's going to go. Carson Wentz has the ability to do that. The Seahawks tend to play teams pretty close for the most part. Uh, I'm going to take them outright, but on the spread at minus three, I'm actually going to go with the Colts there. At the end of the day, honestly, wouldn't be shocked if the Colts somehow upset the Seattle Seahawks. We'll see though. For now, I'm writing with the Seahawks outright Colts on the spread. Afterwards, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Houston Texans. And look, the Texans, for all I care, could play every single damn game this season at home. Uh, It doesn't matter. They should be underdogs in every single game. That's the case this week. The Jaguars are at minus two and a half. Uh, Because the fact of the matter is the Texans are probably one of the worst teams from top to bottom in the NFL. I'm sorry if you guys are Texans fans. But it's an absolute mess. If Deshaun Watson was your starting quarterback, it'd be a different conversation. But due to his off the field concerns and due to the fact that he doesn't want to play for the Houston Texans, well, it's Tyrod Taylor in our center. And I have zero faith in Tyrod Taylor being able to sustain a high scoring offense. Now, thankfully for the Texans, I don't think the Jaguars are going to be one of the best teams in the NFL either. So I could actually see this kind of being a competitive high scoring game, but I do think the Jaguars will pull away from the Texans as the game progresses. Uh, For me, the Jaguars are just a better team all around, uh, especially offensively. Look, even if Trevor Lawrence isn't elite uh, his first year, I think he can be good versus the Houston Texans. That defense doesn't scare me one bit. All you really have to do, even if Lawrence struggles, just ride James Robinson. It worked last year. It can work this year, at least this week versus the Texans. I'm taking the Jaguars outright and on the spread. I think that spread should be higher and only minus two and a half. So I like the Jaguars there. Next up, 49ers at the Detroit Lions. Probably to nobody's surprise, the 49ers are favored here at minus seven and a half. Uh, They will be going with Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, Trey Lance didn't have a chance to really beat him out. Uh, Maybe, you know, he will in the upcoming weeks. But for now, it's Jimmy Garoppolo versus the Detroit Lions team that has improved offensively, I think, a great deal, especially on the offensive line. Now, obviously, it's not that case at the quarterback position going from Matthew Stafford to Jared Goff. But I will say, I think people are a little bit too harsh with Jared Goff. I think he's an average NFL quarterback that if the system is around him, he can do all right. Problem is the system that he had in LA with the Rams, uh, not quite what the Lions have going for them offensively. Uh, I love TJ Hawkinson. I love DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. The wide receivers, still big question marks, but more importantly, that defense. I have question marks uh, about that defense in Detroit. And I think ultimately that's why the 49ers are going to win this game. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is with that run first mentality with guys like Kittle, Ayuk, Debo Samuel. Uh, I like the San Francisco 49ers here. They were banged up all last year. That was one of their big problems. They're back healthy pretty much across offense and defense. So I like the 49ers to win this game outright for sure. On the spread, you know, minus seven and a half, a bit of a big number. Ideally, I tease that down a little bit, but I would still ride with the 49ers there. Moving on, we've got the Arizona Cardinals at the Tennessee Titans. Here are the Titans favored at minus three. This is a really tough game for me to predict because I think both these teams can absolutely win this game. Um, Titans at home, you know, they've got a, I think, more balanced offense with Ryan Tannehill with a better offensive line, with a very solid rushing attack, Derrick Henry, with the addition of Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, Uh, the defense questionable, but you can make the case for the Arizona Cardinals there as well. I think Kyler Murray 
for the Cardinals is the more electric quarterback. In fact, he's my favorite to be the MVP in 2021. But other than DeAndre Hopkins, can you really rely on anybody else? I know they added AJ Green, but what version of AJ Green will it be? And I don't quite trust the rushing attack in Chase Edmonds and James Conner. I think the Titans are the better team. I think they're the more balanced team. Would I be shocked if the Cardinals win? Because, you know, Kyler Murray is just on that next level in terms of rushing ability, in terms of growth potential, in terms of passing yards. He reminds me of a Russell Wilson. Wouldn't be shocked at all. That's why I'm going to kind of hedge my bets here. I'm going to take the Titans outright. I really do think you're going to see that Julio Jones effect benefit them here. Um, And they're just going to have a trickle down uh, just great situation from their wide receivers to their quarterback to especially Derrick Henry being probably more efficient. And I like them to win this game, but on the spread at minus three, like I said, I'm hedging my bets. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. I think it could be a very high scoring game, but I do think it'll be close. I don't think either one of these teams is going to blow out the other. So I'm going to take the Cardinals on the spread. Next up, we've got the New York Jets at the Carolina Panthers. And this is a game that I think I would call a trap game. As somebody that tracks the Panthers a lot, for better or for worse, uh, I'm not sold on them. In fact, you know, uh, I think a lot of the problems that Sam Darnold had with the New York Jets, which obviously this is going to be called the revenge game, Darnold versus the Jets, he might have with the Panthers, specifically a bad offensive line. And the Jets, if they have one thing going for them, it's probably defensively a pretty decent front. Uh, So I do think that can be an issue. Yes, Sam Darnold has more weapons than he's ever had before. I'm not going to deny that. I love Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall, DJ Moore. Christian McCaffrey coming back is huge. Offensively, to me, the Panthers are the better team. But if you're looking for an upset in the making here, uh, I actually really like the chances for the Jets. I think this could be a very high-scoring game. Neither one of these defenses really scares me all that much. Zach Wilson is going to be starting. Jameson Crowder won't be playing. But I think Elijah Moore will have a big game. I think Corey Davis will have a big game. And I wouldn't be shocked if Zach Wilson ends up having a lot of success immediately. The Panthers defense, still young, still kind of figuring it out, uh, susceptible to big plays. I actually really, really like the Jets on the spread. The Panthers at minus five. To me, that's way, way too big of a number for Carolina. Um, They usually let other teams stay in it. Uh, They haven't really learned, you know, they're a young team, how to pull away, how to finish games. So I'm going to go as crazy as it sounds. I'm going with the Jets on the spread. Uh, I'll probably play it a little bit safer. I'll go with the Panthers outright, but you could convince me one way or the other. To me, the way you should bet this game for sure, though, is on the spread with the New York Jets there. Let's move on, though, now to the uh, Minnesota Vikings at the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a really intriguing game to me because I think that, you know, for the Bengals, I really want to see what Joe Burrow has coming back from his injury. I want to see how Joe Mixon is utilized. I want to see what Jamar Chase can do. Uh, For the Vikings, you know, I want to see the growth of a Justin Jefferson. I want to see if either one of these defenses can kind of uh, turn a switch. Uh, So there's a lot of storylines here, but I do think the Vikings are the better situated team. Uh, I'm really worried about that Bengals offensive line. Yes, it's better than what it was last year, but that's not hard to do. Uh, Joe Burrow is coming off a major injury, so maybe there might be some initial concerns how he comes out, maybe a little bit more conservative. Um, And even though, you know, the Bengals probably do have more weapons, I'm going to go with the more uh, probably, you know, quarterback that's a little bit better game oriented, a little bit less mistake prone. I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins here uh, and I I actually like the Vikings defense a little bit more than that of the Cincinnati Bengals. But, you know, either way, I think that this game, if you told me the Bengals win it, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, Personally, I do like the Vikings. I I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Uh, Like I said, uh, I don't think either one of these defenses is necessarily going to turn it around in one year. I think Dalvin Cook is going to have a big game. I like the Vikings outright on the spread. They're at minus three. I'm going to hedge my bets here again a little bit. I'm going to go with the Bengals on the spread. Next up, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles at the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are at minus three and a half here. And 
I think this could be another very high scoring game. You know, Matt Ryan, anytime the Falcons offense is involved, there's the potential for high scoring affairs. Uh, and then on the other side, anytime the Falcons defense is involved, well, that's also kind of the case for opposing teams. And Jalen Hurts here, I think, could be in store for a very, very big game. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Falcons offensively have the Eagles beat in terms of pass catchers, in terms of weapons, Ridley, Gage, Kyle Pitts, you know, Mike Davis. Uh, other than that, I, I think Jalen Hurts, you know, Devonta Smith, Jalen Rieger, Goddard, Ertz, but... I just have a lot more faith in Matt Ryan here. The Eagles defense probably a little bit better, but I'm going to go with the quarterback that I have more faith in. That's Matt Ryan here. Uh, the spread, like I said before, it's only, you know, uh, minus three and a half for the Atlanta Falcons. I could see Jalen Hurts making some mistakes kind of late in this game as it progresses. I love him as a rusher. Don't love him as a passer of the football and I think that's what probably ends up sinking the Eagles. I'm going to take the Falcons outright and on the spread. Moving on, we've got the Washington football team versus the LA Chargers. Washington uh, at home here. Uh, Curtis Samuel won't be playing in this game. Washington going to be rolling out a new quarterback. Obviously, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think that's a boost to this entire offense. Washington has one of the best defenses in the NFL as well. Uh, on the flip side, the Chargers, man, the up-and-coming young stud quarterback in Justin Herbert. Austin Eckler, he was questionable. Now looks like he will be playing. They've got Keenan Allen. They've got one of the most improved offensive lines in the NFL. And, you know, they've got the weapons defensively. It's just a matter of staying healthy. But to me here, I'm going to go with uh, the more experienced team. I'm going to go with the more experienced head coach might be a little bit of an upset because the Chargers are at minus one on the spread. So, you know, it's basically technically a pick em. I think this will probably be one of the lower scoring games of the week. Wouldn't shock me if it's like 20 to 17, uh, 17 to 14, something like that. I'm going to go with Washington here, though. I think their defense is going to be the difference maker. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick has been in enough of these games. Their offense is absolutely loaded with Antonio Gibson, McKissick, Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin, Adam Humphreys. You get the point. Um, I think that they're just a little bit more of a complete team. I'm going to go with them here. I think the more experienced team wins. So I like Washington outright and on the spread. Afterwards, we have got the Saints versus the Green Bay Packers. This game was supposed to be in New Orleans, but uh, instead it will be in Jacksonville due to obviously um, hurricane concerns in New Orleans. So the home field advantage for the New Orleans Saints kind of disappears. Unfortunate for them, the Packers are minus four point favorites. I think that should be the case. In fact, I actually think it should probably be higher. The one thing the Saints do have going for them is I like the fact that they committed to Jameis Winston as their starter. To me, that makes that offense a lot more potent. Defensively, they've also got a good group, a little bit banged up in the secondary, though, and I think that could be the difference maker here, other than also the advantage the Packers have at the quarterback position. You know, the chemistry that he has with guys like Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, uh, the newly added Randall Cobb. I like the Packers in this game. I like them outright. I think it'll be an interesting game, you know, potentially high scoring because Jameis Winston, if there's anybody in this league that'll keep a game, you know, uh, intriguing, whether he's up by 20, down by 20, the guy's going to be slinging that ball uh, no matter what. So I think the Saints do have a chance to hang in there for a while, but I'm going to go with what I think is the more complete team, the more balanced team, the team with a better quarterback to win this game as it progresses. And I actually do like the Packers on the spread as well. I think that number should be higher, especially when you take away the home field advantage for the Saints. So I see the Packers covering that minus four and I like them outright. Moving on now, we have got the Broncos at the New York Giants. Another game that I think will probably be rather low scoring on the day. Uh, you've got two offenses with question marks at quarterback, uh, Daniel Jones and then Teddy Bridgewater. And then defensively, you've got two pretty stingy defenses. Uh, I think, you know, the Denver Broncos defense probably a little bit better. Uh, the Giants offensively, the offensive line kind of scares me. Saquon Barkley should be back, could be back. Uh, if he is back, it's probably going to be on a snap count. No official word on that. I expect him to play, but again, probably going to be limited. 
Uh, it just comes down to me here. Which defense do I like more? And who do I think has the better quarterback? I like the Denver defense more. I think that Teddy Bridgewater, even though he's not, you know, an elite quarterback, I think he's just a average to below average quarterback is the preferred option to Daniel Jones. I haven't seen anything from Daniel Jones uh, yet that would make me believe that he can be the guy. Yes, they've added weapons like Kenny Galladay, you know, Kadarius Toney in the draft, Kyle Rudolph. Uh, I still don't see it. You need a quarterback to make all that work. So I'm taking the Broncos here to win outright. I believe they are at minus three on the spread. And this is where it gets tough because like I said, this is going to be a low scoring game. I think it's going to be, you know, up for grabs for either team. That's why I'm actually going to go with the Giants on the spread. Next up, we've got the Miami Dolphins at the New England Patriots here. Patriots actually at minus two and a half. I'm a little bit perplexed as to why the Patriots are favored. I mean, I guess they are at home. They've got the Bill Belichick advantage, but you know, they've got Mac Jones under center and some people might be celebrating that because it's not Cam Newton. Maybe he was a liability. Maybe you were worried about your team with him, but I'm not just ready to say that Mac Jones is going to be the guy that leads the Patriots to the promised land. He's going up against a very solid po- opponent in the Miami Dolphins who had a very uh, good defense last season. Another, you know, a year in the league for Tua. That's a good thing. They've added weapons like Jalen Waddle. Will Fuller won't play in this game, but, you know, moving forward, he'll be available. So it, it'll be Jalen Waddle, Devontae Parker, you know, Miles Gaskin, Mike Gesicki for the Dolphins. Defensively, I think the Patriots might be a little bit better, but not by much offensively for the Patriots. You know, basically it comes down to me here, Mac Jones versus Tua, who has the better advantage. I really like what the Patriots did uh, during the off season, bringing in a ton of uh, weapons for whoever the quarterback would be. Nelson Aguilar, Jonu Smith, Hunter Henry, you know, you get the picture, but I'm just going to go with the team that I think is a little bit better built offensively that I can trust more so that I have a bigger sample size for. To me, that is the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to take them outright and on the spread. Next up, we've got the Browns at the Chiefs. This one should be one of the higher scoring games of the week. The Chiefs at minus six and a half. I think that's way too high of a number here, even though I think this is going to be a high scoring game. The Browns, Browns honestly have the best roster in the NFL. It's all a matter of does it translate uh, on the field? Because on paper, they're absolutely loaded. We said that about them, you know, last year, the year before. And can Baker Mayfield keep up with Patrick Mahomes? But the way the Browns are built, man, that offensive line is absolutely scary with Nick Chubb, with Kareem Hunt, Odell, Jarvis Landry, all the weapons at tight end. Uh, And then defensively, they are just absolutely flush with talent. And I actually think the Browns can upset the Chiefs here. And I'm going to take them outright. We saw their great, great matchup last year in the playoffs where the Browns were so close, you know, to upsetting the Chiefs there. Uh, If you guys are a little bit nervous taking the Browns outright because, you know, you want to go with Mahomes over Baker Mayfield, you want to go with the high powered offense, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. I mean, probably everybody's uh, week one Super Bowl favorites, the Kansas City Chiefs. I get it. Uh, I understand it. They just made it to the Super Bowl uh, the year before that. They won the Super Bowl. So it, it doesn't shock me. Uh, so if you're worried about it that way on the money line, might I suggest going the Browns on the spread? Since I like them outright to me, that's a no brainer. The Chiefs at minus six and a half. I think that's too big of a number. I think this game is going to be a lot more competitive than people believe. And I think this could be the start of a statement type of year for the Browns, who, if Baker Mayfield can just play at an above average level, are going to be a serious problem all year long. Uh, Then getting to Sunday night, we've got the Chicago Bears at the LA Rams. The Bears are a very intriguing team. They drafted Justin Fields, but they will be starting Andy Dalton here, and going to be starting him versus one of the best, if not best defenses in the NFL, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, a lot of other guys there as well. And they've got an offensive line that's not exactly great. Let's just leave it at that. If there's a liability on that offense other than Andy Dalton, probably that offensive line, which isn't a good combination. I like Allen Robinson. I like David Montgomery. I like Darnell Mooney. I freaking hate this matchup. 
Uh, to me, the Rams are the better team from top to bottom. Yes, we are going to get to see Matthew Stafford with the Rams, and the Bears are very familiar with Stafford, but you can also make the case, well, Stafford's really familiar with the Chicago Bears as well. I think offensively, the Rams have the better you know, weapons with Cooper Cup with Robert Woods, uh, with Matthew Stafford, with their offensive line. Defensively, I think they're better as well. The one thing I do believe the Bears have going for them is they've got a very stingy defense. I think they can keep this game close. I will say that. I think this will probably be just kind of a grinded out, tough, nasty type of football game where nothing comes easy. Uh, for that reason, I actually like the Bears on the spread. I think that betters are being a little bit too... Uh, kind of in on with the Rams at minus seven. I've seen that number even a little bit higher. So giving the Bears a touchdown, I'm going to go with the Bears on the spread. They're Again, they're built to be a team that kind of keeps games close. So for that reason, uh, I think their defense kind of ends up helping them there. But outright, I'm going with the Rams. I think they're the much better team. I think that Matthew Stafford, even though he's going to face a tough matchup, uh, should get the advantages. I think he's the better quarterback, no questions asked, and has the better support system. So I like the Rams outright. And then finally, we have got the Baltimore Ravens at the LA Raiders here. Now I'm going to go with the Ravens uh, outright. Probably no surprises there. On the spread, they're at minus four and a half. Going to also go with them on the spread. I think the Raiders defensively just have way too many question marks. That's been the case for a while. Offensively, like it's Darren Waller and then who else? I don't really believe in Brian Edwards or Henry Ruggs. I need to see it consistently. And even though I like Derek Carr and I think he's underrated, I'm really concerned about that offensive line. To me, they take a big hit last uh uh, year to this year, especially during free agency, some of the losses that they had. And then instead of addressing the offensive line, you go and add a running back and Kenyon Drake. That makes zero sense to me. I think the Ravens, even though they have been ravaged by injuries uh, this last week, which is one of the reasons why I may be debating, you know, looking at the Raiders on the spread here, because morale probably with the Ravens, uh, I mean, Gus Edwards torn ACL, Marcus Peters out. Uh, it's pretty bad, but I think Lamar Jackson will be good enough to overcome the Raiders. I'm really high on uh, once Rashad Bateman uh, is available on him and Mark Andrews, you know, Sammy Watkins, Lamar, Marquise Brown, they should be good enough to beat the Raiders here. Uh, defensively, I also like the Ravens more so. So I'm going to go with the Ravens outright and tentatively going to go with them on the spread. But with that, let's look at our locks of the week. And I'm going to start with uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars over the Houston Texans. Like I said, I think the Houston Texans are one of the biggest messes in the NFL. Probably going to be a popular kind of lock uh, every single week. I think the Jaguars are the better team. Yes, I get it. The Jaguars aren't world beaters, but they can beat the Texans. Next up, 49ers versus the Lions. Give me the 49ers here. Uh, the Lions, even though they've improved offensively, defensively, they are still a liability. So I'll take the 49ers healthy. To me, they are the better team. Then Packers versus Saints. Saints, no more Drew Brees. Jameis Winston under center. It could be fun, you know, could be electric, could be high scoring, but I'm going to take the team with the better quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, the more complete team. Uh, so I'm going to take the Packers there. And then lastly, I'm going to go with the Ravens over the Raiders. Uh, I think it could be closer than some people believe, but at the end of the day, uh, to me, the Ravens are the better overall team. I think the Raiders just have too many holes on that line defensively, so I like the Ravens overall. But with that, we wrap up this week one NFL breakdown with the help of Odds Jam, which again, check it out for all your betting advantages. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us. And let us hear in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.